certainly a good story to what could have been uh, a miserable story for 200 employees and uh, city income tax for Macedonia. Um, so Empire has been in business since 1948. The industrial casting, which was the zinc die casting manufacturers, was our sister company moved to Macedonia in 1972. We moved uh, Empire die casting to the aluminum die casting facility in Macedonia in April of 2001 adding about 125,000 square feet to the current facility. Um, the current facility is 200,000 square feet overall. In 2013, Empire's employment level was 185 employees, payroll about $8 million. In December of 2019, the event was held in SRS Industries LLC, successful in purchasing Empire for $12.25 million. December uh, 20th, the U.S. Bankruptcy Court approves the sale. December 31st, the sale of Empire's assets is closed. December or January 1st, 2014, all employees are retained. The new company name is now American Light Metals LLC, doing business as Empire Diecasting Company. The new owner is Yogan Rothendali. Uh, gives a little bit of background to the owner. Um, spent a lot of years in Chrysler with Lee Iacocca. Retired from American Axle, he acquired uh, Whitehall Industries in 2010. Uh, the next page shows some of the, his facility, uh, Whitehall Industries, which he started in 2009. Um, they built two new facilities in Mexico and also in Kentucky, 2011-2014. Uh, the next page shows their annual sales. Uh, if you look, when he bought the company in 2009, is about the same amount of sales as what Empire had last year. Um, with basically within three and a half years, he grew the company to one in one point one hundred one million dollars in sales. All right, moving on to uh, ordinance number thirteen two thousand twelve. I'd like to offer ordinance thirteen two thousand fourteen for first, second, and third reading by my vote. Thank you very much. Second. All in favor? Aye. No. Roll call. Ms. Darrell? Yes. Mr. Engel? Yes. Ms. Hannigan? No. Mr. Molnar? Yes. Ms. Telly? Yes. Okay. Want to read it? Oh, yes, that would be the next step. Sorry. <clears throat> An ordinance authorizing the mayor to enter into a Macedonia occupancy program agreement with the American Light Metals LLC doing business as Empire Die Casting Company. And what's your pleasure? Mayor, I move that we pass and post before in the law of ordinance 13, 2014. Second. Roll call. Ms. Darrell? Yes. Ms. Drangle? Yes. Ms. Hannigan? Yes, and I'd like to explain the reason that I voted against going uh, one, two, three on the substantive issues like this. I believe we, we should allow the public to weigh in on any kind of, of a major expenditure like this. But, but I think it's a good idea that we have this company and it's a good idea that we're staying here. I just thought we ought to have additional leave. Mr. Molnar? I know in the past we, I was very adamant about going for three readings on all mob agreements. In this scenario, and I think we've kind of changed our, our uh, way of thinking with this because in this scenario, the company needs to have this done in order to move forward with a lot of the uh, financial problems they were having, so I vote yes. And Ms. Tully? Yes. Ordinance number 13-2014 passes. Um, this is good news because uh, Empire Die Casting is our fourth largest company. Um, they do a, they pay a tremendous amount of city income tax, payroll tax, all the things that they do to support this city, and they almost left. And then at the last mo moment, we had a hero sweep down, <clears throat> get on the scene, and now we have moved forward to help them to make this happen and retain how many jobs? About 220. About 200. About 200 jobs. This was first raised in December. Can you give us the 30 seconds? What we're doing and why we're doing it? 
the original legislation on the crop board instructed the finance director to go out for bids, solicit bids, and uh, at that time, contact the council and ask for their approval. Well, I, I looked at three different vendors, which the Cleveland time clock was the lowest, and also they were the closest for any kind of uh, installation or any kind of service agreement. Each time clock was about uh, $1,400, right? And, uh, and then one software package. So that was going to be the test. We put it up here to try to get you know, everyone acclimated to it. At that point, then, uh, we were moving forward, and it was stalled out because I did not follow the procedures outlined. It was uh, Tom Hanson from the law department said, hold everything. You need to get council approval for the purchase of these clocks, and uh, that's where we're at. Mr. President, I'd like to address this. Sure. Since we made a, the law and we were following through on getting the time clock, several things were brought to my attention. Okay. Um, discrimination. Only 27 out of 150 employees are targeted. Uh, what is the protected class? I'm sorry, what? Discrimination only applies if there's a protected class. So you need to tell me what the protected class is before it's a discrimination. Office workers. That the office workers are not a protected class under the United States Constitution. So they don't have anybody can say that they're being discriminated against? I think they can't. Protected classes are... I'm not going to argue well with you. They, no, you know it a lot better than I do. Right. I'm just saying this is what the employee feels. It's discriminatory. Department directors should be exempt. They're on call 24-7. There's very severe sanctions in the legislation that was passed, and it should reflect our contracts with our unions, which have different sanctions. 